Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. For this video I'm going to do my September favourites to bring you up to date once more and the first thing I was hoping to talk about of course is the ab sale that I was going to be doing to raise money for nystagmus research at Moorfields Eye Hospital. That has been postponed because of the weather, typical British weather getting in the way, um, so that is now taking place on the 21st of October all being well, fingers and toes very tightly crossed. So do please keep donating in the meantime because it is very, very much appreciated. I have had plenty of donations, of course, already over the past month. I gave some shout outs in my last video and I'm going to do some now very, very quickly. The first one I have to mention is a big donation I got of 250 quid from Richard Osman. Yes, that one, the guy off Pointless, co-host of Pointless and producer and presenter of many other TV shows. He donated 250 quid and selected gift aid, which means the government will chuck in an extra £62.50. So that is extremely generous of him. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Osmond. That is very, very much appreciated. I'm still in shock about that, to be honest. You know, I don't know the guy. We've never met. I was just tagging various people on Twitter just to see if they'd like or share the post, never mind donating. And... You know, I thought at most maybe he might like or share it. There's no harm in tagging him just in case. And he donated. So, yeah, I'm still stunned by that. Um, but obviously that's really helped push my total up, as have all the donations from various other people. So first there is Lynn Buller, mother of James Buller. And James is also doing the ab sale, but he's doing it for the Aniridia Network to raise money for Aniridia research. So we are both going to do it on the same day. His ab sale was also being rescheduled to the 21st of October, so we're going to be able to do it together and support each other. I also know that my good friend Claire is going to be there. She's another member of the Nice Agnes Network team, so she and I will be able to do it together as well. So there'll be at least three of us doing it together on that day. Sadly, it's not the whole group. Some have already done their ab sale. Congratulations to those who already have. Good luck to those who are still about to do theirs. Simon, my good friend Simon from Guernsey, he's my best mate from school, and he donated which is very, very kind of him. Thank you, mate. Emma James, she's donated on her son's behalf, so that's lovely. Irene, Dave and Marie, a friend of mine from Portsmouth. It's very, very much appreciated that they chipped in. Sam is also a friend from Guernsey. He's a mutual friend of mine and Simon's. And the two of them and a couple of other people came over earlier in the year to spend a few days in London. So I met up with them and hung out with them. And they actually did the slide on the Orbit Tower uh, while they were over. I didn't. I couldn't meet them on that particular day. But they did do the slide and enjoyed it. So they know how big the tower is. They've got a good sense of that. So thank you to Sam for donating. Emma is a fellow blogger and runs the excellent blog rockfordisability.com so do go and check that out because she loves posting about the music she enjoys as well as her disability and other bits and pieces so do go and check her out. John and Zoe are friends of mine from Devon. Thank you very, very much to them for donating. Thank you to Sarah Bell for your donation. She's a follower of mine online. Thank you to Holly. She runs the excellent blog lifeofablindgirl.com Do go and follow her. She's one of the biggest um, blind bloggers that we've got. And she does amazing posts and she's been very successful. So yeah, do go and check out Holly's blog, Life of a Blind Girl. Thank you to Stephen Reed for your donation. That's very much appreciated. Thank you to Wendy. She's a friend of mine from Devon, as is uh, Pauline. Um, she was actually a teacher at my school, so it was very, very nice of her to chip in. And thank you to Dean and Rona from Scotland. They're also good friends of mine from school because Dean was actually a staff member at school. He's also blind but does a lot of extreme sports and you can find out about what he does at extremedreams.co.uk and he's got a YouTube channel as well so go and check out his Extreme Dreams page. It's very, very interesting. It's amazing the amount of stuff he's got up to. And all of that has taken me up to £807 at the time I record this so that's absolutely fantastic. It's way more than I expected to get. I mean, when you consider it, even without Richard Osman's donation, that's still a hell of a lot of money. So thank you ever so much. And yeah, can I reach £1,000 before the 21st of October? That would be awesome. It's a big ask, I know, but it would be awesome if I could hit a nice round £1,000 target and even get beyond that, perhaps. So we'll see what happens. There's still a few weeks to go. So thank you very, very much to everyone who donated towards that. And then the other big Nystagmus-related event during the month was the Nystagmus Network's Open Day, which was held in Birmingham again, like last year. Last year I gave a speech there about building my new social circle in London. This year I could just relax, which was lovely. And it was a very packed agenda, a very interesting agenda this year. Plenty of updates on research from Moorfields and Southampton and Cardiff and other places. Guide dogs were there talking about their habilitation services for young people to help them gain independence and mobility skills. The RNIB were there talking about assistive technology with ORCAM. The Albinism Fellowship were there and... There were two big keynote speakers. The first was Marsha de Cordova, the MP for Battersea and Shadow Minister for Disabled People. She gave a very interesting speech about what it was like working in Parliament with her severe visual impairment and what it was like for her growing up. 
she also stuck around as well to talk to people. Um, so for a politician to keep their appointment when they say they're going to be somewhere and to give an inspiring speech and to stick around to talk to people is very, very much appreciated because they don't always do that. So that's really, really nice of her. Regardless of your party politics, I think everyone agreed she was very, very good. And then there was also David Katz, the internationally renowned photographer. He's taken many pictures over the years of royalty and presidents and prime ministers and celebrities and sports stars. He's worked for the Daily Mail and other people. And for many, many years, he didn't tell people that he was legally blind. He just got on with the job. You know, he can see a bit, you know, but using the camera that enables him to really focus. You know, when he's just looking normally, there's too much visual information. But using a lens, you can actually focus on what he's looking at and get really good photos. Um, so if you check out his website, Through My Lenses, You'll be able to see his portfolio, a lot of the pictures he's done. He's really, really good. And his speech was fabulous. It was just really uplifting and interesting and just really inspiring. You know, he really is a great guy. And I got to meet him afterwards as well. And he's really, really friendly, really nice, really chatty. And hopefully we'll see him at future Nice Dagmas Network events because it was really, really great to meet him. So you can check out David Katz's website at throughmylenses.org. And I do recommend you check it out because he's got a lot of great images on there. He's really, really good. And it was great to meet many other people on the day as well and just get chatting to other people who have nystagmus or have children with nystagmus or work professionally. You know, there was an optician there who dealt with people with nystagmus and was finding out about the research going on. There was a big variety of people there. It was a really, really social day. It was really well organised as well. Everything ran to time. Sue and her team from the nystagmus network deserve every credit for that. I also got a nystagmus network t-shirt on the day because I was thinking about wearing that for the abseil so I had something with a logo on it. As it happened more fields have now also sent me their t-shirt so I can wear that really because that's who I'm raising the money for. So yeah I've got a choice of t-shirts now. So yeah it was just a really really nice day and I stayed in the venue where the open day was being held, the McDonald Burlington Hotel. That's a really really nice place. It's quite posh compared to the Premier Inn but it is worth paying a little bit extra for it. It wasn't a lot of money anyway, really, to be honest. And it was just really nice, really comfortable. The staff were great. They showed me to my room to make sure I know where it was. They helped me at breakfast to get things and they were just really smart and professional. It was just great. So it was a really, really fun day. I've made a blog post all about the day. So do go and check that out. Moving on to blogging and social media. And I've had a couple of guest posts published this month. Amanda Jean interviewed me for her blog just general information about me really and what it's like for me being a blogger and that was really really much appreciated and I featured an interview with Amanda on my blog in return and then likewise I was interviewed by Chelsea from VI Blind Resources. She interviewed me about what it was like to be growing up with visually impaired parents which was a nice angle to talk about because I'd never really written about that before so it was quite nice to answer questions about that. She's also answered some questions for me to publish on my blog from her so you'll be seeing a guest post from her very soon. And there's also a third blogger who I've done an interview with, but I won't spoil the surprise there, but it's another one that I really admire. So yeah, I seem to be um, getting involved in quite a few interviews with fellow bloggers at the moment. And if anybody else wants to do an interview exchange or any type of collaboration, do let me know. I also passed 500 Twitter followers during September as well, which was really impressive. I've never expected to get a number that high. So I'm very, very grateful as always to everybody that follows me there or here on YouTube or on Facebook or Instagram or my blog, whatever. Thank you to all of you, wherever you follow me. And I was also featured on a list of 12 disabled bloggers that you need to add to your reading list, which was an article published by Ewan's Guide. Uh, many of you will know Ewan's Guide as the website where people can publish accessibility reviews for various places all over the country. It's a very big community effort, that site, and there's a lot of reviews on there now, so you get a lot of information if you're planning to go somewhere. It was very much a surprise. I had no idea they were going to include me in their list, and it is a list with a lot of great people on it, so I'm very honoured to be part of it. So thank you very much to Ewan's Guide for doing that. That was very, very kind of you. Also, if you've been watching my posts on Instagram about the ab sale and one or two posts on Twitter, you'll see that I've been adding subtitles as well below the posts there. And I've been doing that using an app called Clipomatic. I saw other people using it, so I thought I'd give it a go. And it, yeah, it works quite well. Basically, when you're filming a little video clip on it, it uses voice recognition to automatically generate subtitles. And then you can go in and edit them to correct them, as you will inevitably have to, and then just publish it, basically. It also has a little timer on the screen, so you can see how long it takes, because Instagram stories have a limit of 15 seconds per clip. So it's handy to keep an eye on that. And you can trim the clip after you've done it. 
you can change how the subtitles are displayed. They've got a few different options for that. And yeah, it just works really nicely. I've been quite happy with it. And then moving on to the theatre, I saw a play with my good friend Claire at the Watford Palace Theatre called Dishoom. This is about a young man in a wheelchair who's very much restricted from being independent, more by other members of society and his own family than his actual disability. But he then finds that his biggest form of escapism is in these dream sequences inspired by the Bollywood film Cholet, which are very cleverly visualised and kind of brought to life on the stage, whether it be him riding a motorbike or fighting off villains or whatever it may be. It's very colourful and fun and interesting. There are serious issues there, of course, being dealt with due to the fact that he is disabled and isn't able to be independent. And also because there are race issues as well, because the National Front are coming into the town too. But it's not a heavy, dark play. It's actually quite a fun play. So it's actually really interesting, really good. Everyone in it's brilliant. We got to have a touch tour as well beforehand. We got to meet the main member of the cast who played Simon in the wheelchair and one or two other people and members of the crew. And we got to explore the set and the costumes and props and stuff like that. And then we had audio description as well. And all of that stuff was provided by Vocalize as usual. So we felt really engaged with the play and really enjoyed it, it was really, really good. And it's worth noting that the play is touring as well. I've listed the theatres that it's touring to in my blog, I found it listed in an article. So go and have a look and see if it's coming to a theatre near you because it's really, really good and I recommend going to see it if you can. And then Claire and I also went to the Victoria and Albert Museum to look at their new video games exhibition, which, as you might expect from the v &A, is all about the design of video games rather than actually the technology behind them. So it's all about the design processes behind the characters and the landscapes and the artistry in general, all that kind of stuff. It's really, really interesting to get an insight into the games that they'd chosen to put on display. It was all like modern games. There was, wasn't retro games there. There was one or two retro games there that had influenced them, but it was mainly focusing on more modern titles that had really you no know, fancy graphics and that kind of thing. So it was really, really interesting to look at that. It's a shame there wasn't any retro games that we kind of knew from when we were younger because it would have been interesting to see how they were kind of designed and developed as well. But we still enjoyed looking at what we did see there. Of the big games that were there, one was called Kentucky Route Zero, which appealed to us because it was a bit like a choose-your-own-adventure game in that you choose like the dialogue that your character is going to say when they're interacting with someone else and they make other choices as they go along. So that kind of reminded us of those old choose-your-own-adventure things and it was indeed inspired by them. They had an example of a really old text-based game where you could kind of choose your own direction. So it was inspired by that kind of thing. And then there was a game called No Man's Sky, which is set in this huge universe. You can you know, fly around and fight and all this kind of stuff. And what impressed us about it was the fact that it has 18 quintillion planets in the game, which is a hugely incomprehensible number that nobody could ever possibly visit. But the software has this algorithm in it that can generate this huge number of planets as and when it needs to whenever people try and visit them. So that was quite fascinating and they showed you some of the designs for just a few of the different terrains and landscapes that you could potentially see. So that was quite interesting and impressive. There was also a weird little game, isn't really the right word, it's more interactive art in a sense, called The Graveyard, where you basically have to guide this old woman through a graveyard, which is beautifully rendered, the graphics are lovely, to a bench for her to sit down. And that's it. <laughs> that's all you do. You just walk her through this graveyard. So you can just take your time to look around if you want to. The only enhancement for the game is that you can add the risk of her dying on the way. So you have to kind of try and hurry her up a bit. That's it. It's a strange piece of interactive art, like I say. It's not a game as such. But it was an interesting little curiosity that you could actually play on. You know, the big games I mentioned, you couldn't play, but this little game you could. And then there was a little arcade at the end where you could play a variety of slightly strange games, one of which was called Quop, which is spelled Q-W-O-P, because you use those letters on the keyboards to control this athlete to try and make him run 100 metres. So you use Q and W to control his thighs and O and P to control his calves, and it's really, really hard. I could barely move um, the athlete at all. Claire did manage to get him to run a very, very tiny distance, albeit in a very, very odd way, which had us uh, giggling. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was quite fun. That was a, an interesting way to finish the day off. So yeah, it was an interesting exhibition. Like I say, it's a shame there wasn't any games that we actually knew because it would have been interesting to get an insight into them. And Having classic games that everyone knows would have possibly drawn more people in, I'd have thought, really. But it was still interesting what was there anyway. So if you do like video games, then it's well worth checking out. 
And then I also went with my mother to Buckingham Palace where we had a sensory garden tour with a group of other visually impaired people. And we were led around by a gardener who was really passionate and knowledgeable about his work and was really keen to kind of share various different facts with us about the gardens, which was really, really interesting. And if you wanted to ask him any questions about gardening in general, for tips to take away with you, for instance, then you could ask him. He was only too happy to oblige. And we were able to feel and smell some of the things as well, which was great. And there was a lady there giving us some of the history too. So it was a really, really interesting tour. And then straight after that, we went inside for a staterooms tour as well. So my mother and I picked up an electronic audio description guide, which you can use like a phone basically, or with headphones if you prefer. And yeah, it just guides you around all the different rooms. And the route is roped off anyway, so you can't get lost. You just follow everyone else. But there are very clear directions and there are very, very detailed descriptions in each room because every room is full of lots of detail. This is Buckingham Palace after all. It's an incredible place. Every room is absolutely stunning from floor to ceiling. There is something to look at everywhere. It's just amazing. I do highly recommend checking out Buckingham Palace's staterooms. They are really, really beautiful and impressive. And then on another weekend, I went out on my own on two afternoons to have a walk along the Thames path. There's this path that goes all the way along the Thames, as the name suggests, and you can basically do it in sections. There's a map on the Transport for London website that shows you all the different sections and tells you facts about them and things. And yeah, you can just walk along it at your leisure, basically. And that's what I did. So I chose a section from the Thames Barrier to Thames Mead on the first day. And then on the second day, I walked from Bermondsey near Tower Bridge all the way to the O2 Arena in Greenwich, which was a very long walk. And it was a very good exercise. I took lots of photos on the way, as you can imagine. It's a really nice, relaxing walk. It's really nice and quiet by the Thames as well. So it's really relaxing. So I, I really enjoyed that. It was a nice way to take advantage of the nice weather. And then when I got to the O2 Arena at the end of the second day, I decided to come back across the Thames using the cable car, the Emirates Airline cable car, which I've never used before. So it was a good opportunity to give it a go and test my head for heights ahead of the abseil as well. And it was lovely. You know, it's a great view from up there, especially as the sun was going down as well. So it was a nice kind of sunset view behind the skyscrapers and over the O2 arena. And you can see quite a long way from up there. And it's just a lovely, smooth, easy ride. So yeah, I was very, very glad I did that. It's one of those things you kind of have to do at least once as a Londoner. And there's a video of it on my YouTube channel as well. So if you click the card, you can see that. Or go to the description, there'll be a link in there as well. In terms of entertainment, um, I've been enjoying the new series of Taskmaster. This is the seventh series on Dave. Always a great show, that one. Always hilarious. Um, you know, you always kind of wonder when they get comedians on there that you don't really know that well or haven't really heard of, whether they'll be any good or not. But every series... <laughs> It always works out very, very well. And the comedians I do know, I mean, Rod Gilbert is very good on it this season, as is James Acaster, and the others are all good as well. So I recommend Taskmaster if you've never checked it out. I've mentioned it before, I think, but it's just a show I love. So I'm glad they keep bringing it back. And I also bought some uh, new music as well. I got the remastered album of The Song Remains the Same by Led Zeppelin. That's the soundtrack to their concept film. Not their best live album, perhaps. You know, How the West Was Won was better and the DVD set they did with shows from the Albert Hall and Nebworth and stuff was probably better as well. But even so, it's still a good show. It is Led Zeppelin. They're always great live. And then I also got No Security, a concert by the Rolling Stones from San Jose, part of their From the Vault series where they've been releasing a lot of concerts. So I've added that to my collection. But the main thing where CDs and DVDs are concerned this month is the fact that I've been reorganising my collection somewhat. Um, all my CDs and DVDs were basically boxed up when we moved and haven't come out of their boxes since. And now I've actually got room to put them somewhere in the house. And I wanted to kind of find the best way to fit them into the limited space that we ultimately have. And I've found out that you can get these binders that you can put CDs and DVDs in. So I've got some binders from Amazon that hold 400 discs, which I've been putting my CD collection in. I've already filled up one of them, uh, which is nice and big like that. And it just zips up. So all the CDs are kept nice and secure. You can't keep the artwork in with them. But, you know, I can keep the booklet separately if I want to. It just saves a lot of room not having to have the cases, to be honest. So I've got discs by Abbott and ACDC in there. So I can just flick over the page. And it just stores them all nicely like that, really. It's just easy to kind of flick through them. I've left a few strategic gaps in case I want to add any more CDs later on. Um, but, no, otherwise, yeah, it's just really handy to have that. And I don't buy many CDs anyway these days. The only ones I can see myself buying in the relatively near future are these CD box sets that Def Leppard are releasing. But you never know, one or two others might crop up as well. And yet, you know, I don't listen to the CDs directly anyway. Everything's ripped onto iTunes on my computer. But it's nice to keep the physical discs as backups, I think. 
I just don't need the cases for them. You know, I'm not going to sell them on or anything like that. Um, so I'm not worried about keeping them. So yeah, that's just a nice space saver. It's really, really useful. That binder has got ABBA through to status quo in there. So I managed to cram quite a lot in. Uh, I've got a second binder that I'll put the rest of my artists in along with my compilation discs that I've got. I'll then use another one for the audiobooks that we've got and then probably a couple more for all my TV DVDs because I've got a lot of TV shows on DVD, many of which have multiple discs, as you, as you have seen from my previous videos that I've done about my collection. Um, I might actually do new videos about my collection once I've got these binders done because then I can properly flick through them and show you more easily and bring you up to date with the newer stuff that I've got. So maybe for a Christmas special this year I'll take you through my DVD collection again, do a refreshed video, perhaps get rid of the old ones and perhaps show you my CD collection as well so you can see the sort of physical CDs I've got. But then I've also got some smaller ring binders as well because some aspects of my DVD collection aren't so numerous. So for instance films and live comedy DVDs and music I haven't got quite so many of in each case so it seems better to put them into these special binders. Um, they're just ring binders and you get sleeves with them and basically the sleeves allow you to put the artwork in the front just by flattening the spine and then you can put two discs in the back like that. So you know if you get a bonus disc as I have in this case of Queen's Greatest Video Hits you can put them both in together. Or if you've got two single disc titles then you can actually put both discs in here and put both pieces of artwork in there. So for instance here I've got Queen Live at the Rainbow which is one disc and on the other side I've got Queen A Night at the Odeon and I've put the artwork in the back for that. But you know, the other disc is still sitting under that quite comfortably. Um, so yeah, it's just a nice convenient way of storing the artwork with the DVDs so you can just flick through. For the big binders I showed you just now, you can't store the artwork in them so I'm going to have to store them separately, which is fine. I don't often need to refer to it anyway, to be honest. It's the discs I'm more interested in. If I want to watch a DVD, I'm going for the disc, not the booklet. But yeah, it's nice to be able to keep the artwork with them for things like films and music DVDs. It does look better in that instance. So yeah, I'm just basically reorganising my collection that way just to save an awful lot of space. You know, it's cost a bit of money to buy these binders perhaps, but it's, it's worth it. I think for the investment, it just makes everything easier to transport and carry around and move around the house or whatever, or to move to a new house if I ever move again in the future. So I'm quite happy with that. It's useful for me, this way of doing things. Mum and I have also done a bit more Lush shopping as well to get some new shower gels. We got our first shower gel last month. So this time we wanted to get a few more. So we've got a few big bottles online. We got Happy Hippie, It's Raining Men and Dirty Spring Wash. So we're looking forward to trying all of those. We're still finishing off the old shower gel, which was the Olive Branch, I think it was called. And that's been really, really nice. And it lasts a long time. As with many Lush products, you don't have to use much to get a good use out of it, like shampoo bars, you know, it takes a few little rubs to get a nice lather up and with this you don't need to squirt out much of the shower gel, it actually lathers up very nicely, so we're very, very happy with that. We also got a few other bits that we normally get as well, we did get a couple of shampoo bars that we've already used before and then um, moisturising cream for mum. But the biggest purchase during the month was an order from Benson's for Beds. We went to visit their store back in August and we decided to place an order with them as a result of that. So I got a brand new double bed and a mattress and some very comfy pillows. And mum got a new mattress for a single bed downstairs because she didn't need to get a new bed, just the mattress was adequate. And she got some new pillows too. We got some new bedside tables as well, which are really nice, got really soft covering on them and a glass bit on the top and it's all really good quality stuff you know it's an investment to buy a bed and a mattress and stuff because they've got to last you for years and get they get lots of use out of them so yeah i've got a nice big new double bed to spread out in now which is lovely it's really really comfortable and then finally we got a freebie during the month as well um, earlier in the year we bought a victor stream reader from humanware which allows you to play talking books from the rnib in daisy format and other mp3 books and internet radio and podcasts and stuff like that so we bought that and we filled in a customer satisfaction survey at the time that they email you around thought nothing more of it and then mum got a call from humanware saying because you filled out the survey you were entered into our quarterly prize draw and you've won <laughs> so that was a big surprise and she was offered either a portable video magnifier which is no good to her and she can't see and I'm not going to use one or a free Victor Reader stream and mum went for the free Victor Reader stream because why not? Yes she's already got one but 
having a second one is handy, especially as Mum's audiobooks are actually spread across two 32 gigabyte memory cards. That's how many audiobooks she's got. She can now have one machine for each of her cards. So that's great. And if one machine breaks down, she's got the other one as a spare. So we've got a free Victor Reader stream in the post, which is great, a lovely way to kind of end the month. And on that surprising and happy note, I'm going to leave it there for this month. Uh, as you've seen, there's been plenty going on despite the lack of an ab sale. There was still plenty to enjoy and get involved with as per usual. I'm always keeping myself busy. Fingers crossed for the ab sale on 21st of October and please do keep donating towards it because you know I'm all geared up for it now. So I'm really keen to kind of get it out of the way, but I'm obviously nervous about it as well. So every bit of support you can give in these extra few weeks would be very, very much appreciated. This is the perfect chance to get even more money raised. So thank you for watching this favourites video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting and I will see you for another video very, very soon. Bye.